I used to live in Los Angeles, and the first time we had to visit SolidWorks uh, in the Concord office, uh, I was uh, driving up uh, to, uh, to the Route 2 on, um, on a rental car, and I'm like, what the heck, where is this place? And the boonies are where? I worked at GE actually for, for seven years, worked in the CAD group, did sort of the CAD admin, did a lot of automation programming, a lot of programming, um, and then again, backed my way in by mistake. My wife saw an ad in the paper for a job at this new CAD startup, and that was it. Company meetings could take place. Um, you know, we could, we could fit most of the people um, in a single training room. At that time, I was a uh, student, uh, finishing my PhD degree at MIT. I heard there is a new founded CAD company by uh, two MIT alumni. I applied uh, for the job. I started my career with manufacturing and consulting services, working on the milling package. SolidWorks came to one of our users groups and took most of our customers. <laughs> so, if you can't beat them, join them. At Computer Vision, I guess for me, that's the, the before SolidWorks timeframe. We were developing on Sun Microsystem workstations. It was Unix-based. It was um, um, it was really an industry for the really privileged customers at the time to be in CAD. You know, I came from GE, where we had you know Unix machines, which were high-end, super expensive boxes, and and in a cool you know cooled room, special special area where you had to keep the machines cool. Every uh, CAD software product were based on uh, either mini computer or workstation. Software and hardware was put into one. That you can imagine, that whole system will cost you like $1 million. When I was at Computer Vision and SolidWorks had just started, um, it was an extremely novel idea in that Solid was, was actually democratizing access to, to CAD CAM. It was on PCs, it was made available on Windows, made available to everyone. But SolidWorks is the first product to release a CAD software based on the PC, personal computer. That's, that is a really a revolution. This product at that time, it was uh, pretty new and uh, a PC based uh, CAD software was not even possible before. SolidWorks, the product back then was not as strong as the 3D product that I had implemented at the company I came from, but I could see how fast it was growing and I could see the, the biggest difference between SolidWorks and the product that I was trying to implement was by far ease of use. Previous product was Unix-based, uh, was hard to use, powerful, pretty powerful, yes, for the for 1996, but uh, there were so many people that couldn't utilize the power because they couldn't figure out how to use the product. Our competitors' reaction to SolidWorks at first was um, that it was a, a toy a, and it wasn't a threat. Our competitors, the high-end competitors running on Unix said, oh, SolidWorks is a toy, it'll never work. Their mindset was like, uh, if you don't spend uh, like hours, days, even weeks, or if not months to learn my software, your software is a joke. That's their mindset. And at uh, that time, we just like, okay, we'll see what happens. In the early days, people don't understand how much we actually did lose to our competition. Even though SolidWorks was easy to use and it was capable, it lacked a lot of the functionality that our com biggest competitors did at the time. So it was fun to go out and present and demo SolidWorks, but at the same time, we would have a lot of uh, feedback on what it was missing, what it could do better. Uh, and that was the, when I think the nature of the company came into play. You know, SolidWorks with their partners was very in tune to what the customers and the, and, the, and the market wanted. So they would listen to us, they would gather their feedback, they'd go back to R&D, and they would turn around these updates very quickly. And we quickly overcame a lot of the challenges that we saw early on in the, in the early days. In October 1995, Stephen Wolf, uh, who was an uh, industry analyst and his uh, uh, computer-aided engineering newsletter was very popular among the, among the industry. And he wrote, you know, uh, move over pro engineer, the next generation is here of CAD. Computers were already changing every life. So people knew that 
you know, the pen and paper was not the way. So in a way, we were, we were creating a, a, a new paradigm on, on a vision that was already established. We used to do what we would call a benchmark. The customer would drop some drawings on, the, on front of you and say, you got to make this. There were four vendors in the same big conference room at the same time, all in four corners. And the customer would come around, look over your shoulder at various times and say, OK, now I want you to build this part. And, you know, so you'd build that part and then the other one would have to wait to build that part. So you were building, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 part assembly. And the reseller that I was going with, they were really good. And they brought a printer in with us. So every time we, I would get done with a part and a drawing, I would print it. So the, our competitors would hear the printer go off. <laughs> And it would make noise, you know, as it did back in the day. And they'd be like, oh, geez, that guy just got another part done. He got another part done. He got another. If there was any fire anywhere, I was the guy who can go there and try to work on, the, on that part because I had to learn a lot. And I enjoyed all, all that stuff. So if you think of early challenges back then, everything was a challenge. It was 98. SolidWorks was still an upcoming CAD uh, software. It was not a, it was not mature at all. If you look at SolidWorks the way it is today, of course, everything looks uh, as if it, it just happened, but there was a lot of hard work to, to get where we are today. I can still remember Mike Payne, and he, he was the VP of R&D at that time. And he always had a, had a paper in his hand. Okay, these are the box we need to fix. If we want to kick his ass, you got to do this job. Finish up this box. The spirit at that time is you find the problem, you fix the problem. So there's no pushing around. And uh, you see a bug and you fix the bug. Doesn't matter that the code belongs to who. There's no ownership in SolidWorks. And uh, there are always disasters, multiples each day. The spirit is you have to make mistakes to to create something great, and uh, so the founders has that uh, great spirit to allow you to make mistakes, and uh, they also very frank and they helping you by fixing it. So remember, the rule is uh, you find the problem, you fix the problem. There was a major problem three weeks before one of the SolidWorks releases went out. We were able to get it solved within the three week period but we knew that we had introduced some difficulties in the system. And with every single person working like crazy for the next week or two, we produced probably the quickest service pack one that ever went out in SolidWorks. Life isn't predictable and the world can throw a curveball at you. And when it threw a curveball at SolidWorks, it was difficult, but everyone really hung together. There was no release party. Everyone was sweating it out to the very end. What used to be said, John Hirschdeck and then John McElhinney after him at every single uh, company meeting that hiring is the most important thing we do. And they, they reiterated that constantly. And it really, it, it, I think it made a huge impact. I mean, the, the people that you know, joined you know, the first 10 years and, and a lot of them still here are phenomenal. I mean, they, they love the, the work, they love the industry. They're, you know, everyone's respectful of each other and everyone wants to do the right thing and help the customers. And that, I mean, it just makes it such a fun place to work. At that time, we work as almost like a family, all right? Even though the pressure to release is very high. However, I think uh, we work uh, day and night. So every other Friday, people will bring some uh, dishes uh, to the office. Then we will have the... Uh, a dinner together so to maintain the family environment. The user experience was one of the biggest challenge. By that, what I mean is even in order to create the simplest possible designs, people had to go through a lot of, they had to jump through a lot of hoops. SolidWorks was perhaps the very first CAD application which focused first on user experience, then on functionality. So our, our motto right from day one was that we are a customer driven company. We listen to our customers, their needs, how they want us to grow. But 
We also focused on solving their needs by giving them the easiest possible way to get things done. That is still part of our DNA. Even today, when you see things, we still do it in the same exact way. So uh, that was part of our DNA. It is part of our DNA, and it will be part of our DNA in future. We need imagination. We need to imagine a future. We need to imagine new ways to solve old problems. And for me, one of the best ways to do it is uh, to empower as many people to use what the human brains are designed for, which is to imagine, to be creative. Experience is human, right? When you create this human connection, uh, things goes, uh, goes, uh, goes very well. That is why we invest so much in our community, because we like uh, the human touch and the human exchange. And this makes everything easier and better. And we intend to continue to do so. Innovation doesn't stop at SolidWorks. We listen to our customers, we take their problems, we solve their problems. And again, we are moving more from 3D design into this world of experience that we have. Scientists dream the world, engineers create it.